Welcome to episode 90 of the Functional Tennis Podcast. I'm Fabio Molly, your host. We have a special episode this week to celebrate Novak Djokovic's 311 weeks as world number one. And to help us celebrate, we have his long-term coach, Marion Vida, and former Wimbledon champ and also coach of Novak, Goran Ivanisevic. They tell us how their journey began with Novak, challenges along the way, what makes Novak so special, and what is good enough today is not good enough tomorrow for Novak. Shout out to our podcast sponsors, Slinger Bag, the awesome portable ball machine, which I can't wait to get back on court once we're out of lockdown here in Dublin, Ireland. A special thanks goes to the team at Essex Tennis who helped set up this interview. They're doing a great job in tennis and especially with their new content they're putting out to help coaches as well as helping me get access to great people in the world of tennis. They have a current campaign promoting Sunrise Mind, which focuses on the body and mind. And these are two areas which Novak, who wears their court FF2 shoe, by the way, if you didn't know, really excels in. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, guys, welcome to the Functional Tennis Podcast. Absolute pleasure to have you on. Great to celebrate 311 weeks, Novak being world number one. That is absolutely amazing. Tell me, what does it mean for you guys? Okay, I'll let Marian speak first because he's older and uh, he's uh, longer <laughs> in all this. In this <laughs> he's in the team from the beginning, so he knows uh, all the... Uh, hey, the, man, the I'm team. older. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. If I may start, first one. So I would like to say that obviously it's a... Uh, Quite a long, quite a long journey. It's amazing journey, and uh, has been three eleven. It's incredible effort with all our team, and uh, I'm only I I only can say I'm very proud to to be with the with Novak all the way along, and uh, with with my team. So I really appreciate every time spent with him and uh, I, it's really sweet i would say this achievement nice no definitely is and, and goran what's it mean for you but i i am the fresh in the team it's going to be now two years but you know with all this uh, crazy thing happening in the world with corona and last uh, two years with the uh, Everything, uh, it's, it's a great achievement, you know, he, we, all, we all in the team, we were hoping that uh, this will happen and, uh, but when you go back, when, as a Novak uh, fan, when I was uh, before, even I was not uh, in his team, if you go back uh, nine, eight, nine, ten years ago, you know, nobody ever thought that this is, can be done. You know, everybody talk about Roger, Roger, but now you have uh, Novak who did the record and it's not over, you know, it's only 3.11. Now it's, uh, this is going to go more and more and more. You know, we were talking about Steffi Graf, 372, that is impossible, but everything is possible with this man and all the, all the hard work, all the, all the, all the, everybody in the team, achievement of everybody is not, you know, he had to, produce that on the tennis court, but everybody else, you know, all coaches before me, you know, Marianne is there from the beginning, but there was uh, Boris, uh, Andre, Radek, but you know, the, everybody contributes something and and uh, from the physios, from the, uh, especially, you know, Edo, Elena, you know, everybody did uh, unbelievable, amazing, hard job for him to be kind of mind free and 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 be ready on the court was ups and downs especially last year maria knows the best but uh, he did it and that's what is important uh, it's amazing and he, he's he's in such good shape in general it i can't see him letting off anytime soon what's your guess on how many weeks can he do how, how long do you think how, how long do you think he can keep going for uh I, I, I honestly don't know. It just depends on, on him, you know. Uh, if he's healthy, if he's, uh, his mind is, is uh, clear like he was in Australia and he knows what he wants to do, 
I mean, sky is the limit. Like I said before, you know, Steffi Graf 372, you know, it's, you know, can be possible. Uh, so uh, anything is possible. Yeah. You know, most important yeah. is to be healthy, then we see what's going to happen. And, and like, exactly, I agree. And Marion, like to show up for somebody to show up week after week, month after month, year after year to stay at the top of the game. Where does that energy and burn and fire come from to be able to continually to do this? You know, I when I started with him in uh, 2006 and his ambition as his family, ambitious, they were very ambitious and uh, to establish him number one. So in that time, I was really laughing at at, at their uh, their stance uh, and uh, at, uh, and I, I was like just laughing and I said you know it's a long way something like whatever but uh, in the next five years when I worked with him and he was not still number one because he wanted to go there too fast I always make him grounded and you know uh, and uh, i told him always like something listen you have to work harder you have to put quality in the practice and uh, stuff stuff like this you know <laughs> normal stuff but once i remember i told him some sentence which i read in the book in the wise book <laughs> it's not from me i have to admit that it's not from me but i told him listen i don't believe in miracle miracles but i rely on them so, uh, you know, and he went through the sweat, through the passion for the sport, through development of his game, through pain, through effort. And uh, there was a time when he didn't believe he can be number one. There was up and down during those five years, since, since 2006 till 2011. And, uh, and obviously, I was with him all the time. Obviously, there were... A lot of changes in the team, coming new coaches, fitness coaches, mentalists, nutritionists, and everything. But I was always there to tell him to be uh, on uh, feet on the ground. And, and you know, if if that many changes in tennis, because he was very creative, and uh, you know, he was uh, trying to improve too fast, and sometimes it was counterproductive. His serve was not working in one period of time, or forehand was not working and you know I always told him let's get to the fundamentals uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the to the to the base you know always start what do you know the best so it's your baseline game and we start slowly working on uh, other other stuff and uh, improving his game until he started believing that he he can beat Nadal and Federer in 2011 where he break through and uh, really that season was incredible because i don't know now it was 48 wins in a row or something like this and then he won three three slams and uh, in wimbledon I, I i'm not sure uh, I, I, what day it was but he beat uh, uh, songa in semi final and final nadal in wimbledon and 2011 he became number 1 in the world so since then he changed his life basically, and and he changed his uh, perspective. And I was a little worried because I thought this is it, you know, number one, and that's it. Because he he, <laughs> he had the big dream in his head, and then he fin and he accomplished that. But after that, you know, he he started believing he can be there for a little longer because once he started beating Federer and Nadal. Which was impossible before, basically only only very very random, but now he was really dominating the game, and because physically he was stronger, he changed his diet, he changed his uh, attitude to the practices. He was more effective, more more quality in in, in the practice, and uh, obviously you could see that he could climb up and he can stay there for longer, but that long, I must admit that that long it's only that long uh, that it's almost six uh, it's six years i would say it's six years uh it's it's hard to believe but i think it's only confirms my previous quote which means <laughs> i don't believe in miracle but i rely on them but 
he accomplished that unbelievable. And I think he can be, as Goran said and mentioned, that he can stay there for a long, long time. Uh, hopefully, uh, the health will be will be okay. If if the health if he will be healthy, he can really break more re records. He's he's very motivated. I, I can I can see the records being broken. And Goran, for you, you've worked with other great players, Berdic, Chilic. What's apart from working really hard? What's the big difference you see in Novak and these other great players you've worked with? I mean, the, the all top players, you know, with Cilic, I won a Grand Slam, US Open. But you see with Novak, what today is good, tomorrow is not good anymore. It has to be better. Every day has to be better. Every day you have to improve. You have to, you know, it pushes you to be better, to be a better coach. And, and, and you know, it's just... Uh, and you see the results, you know, results, uh, they are, when you sit there, when you see him winning Grand Slams, uh, and it's really amazing, you know, so he made me again a, a better coach, but it's not easy, you know, you know, it's a lot of, like uh, Marian said, ups and downs, a lot of pressure, because final is not good enough. It's like same you coaching a football club Real Madrid, you know, you lose two games and they start to wave with this <laughs> white handkerchief to go, you know, they, they want to kick you out. So it's saying, you know, his institution, his uh, only records, records win, 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 win. And uh, it's a lot of pressure, but life without pressure, it's boring. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But he, he puts you guys under pressure. So he, he asked, who asked the most questions on the team? Uh, listen, uh, me and Marian, we are, uh, we, are, we are think almost the same, but uh, we work a lot of time together and uh, we are different. You know, Marian is within more, more years and he talks more to him. Uh, I talk less, you know, I, I'm observing and then I tell him, uh, but, you know, he is the guy who wants, uh, you need to have always answer prepared. You know, when he asks you something, you need to tell him, you know, that doesn't matter, but you need to tell him and uh, sometimes it's a lot of pressure uh, it's it's great you know to be around uh, i i'm really blessed to to be in this team you know because we have really unbelievable people in this team from uh, marian is the easiest guy to work with uh, we have unbelievable physios we have unbelievable condition trainer we have unbelievable people behind the scenes who are unbelievably important in uh, LA and uh, Edo who are doing unbelievable things for us to be more relaxed on the court, so not to think about uh, other things that we not need to think. We need to concentrate on Novak and his questions and be ready to answer all the time. You know? yeah, he's tough, he's tough. He's a tough guy. But when did you, Bodius, when did you see Novak for the first time in, in your life? Uh, I saw him when he was 14 and a half years old in a Nikki Pilic Academy because I was working with Nikki and in Germany, in Munich, and he was there. So Nikki Pilic told me, listen, there is one kid here from Serbia. He's going to be number one in the world one day. So I played with him a little bit, actually, half an hour. We played with him. Actually, he gave me the chocolate because uh, he thought I am tired. <laughs> so he, he ran and he brought me the chocolate, uh, I remember that. And since then I'm following his career, uh, we were always stay, even when I was not in the team, we were uh, good friends and you know, we speak the same language. So that was the first time I saw him, long, long time ago. And, and did you, did I read somewhere you called him a beast in a good way? He was a beast of a player. You know, he's the, you know, like if you're watching National Geography, this wild channel, you know, he's like a lion, you know, you never see a lion drinking cocktail, you know, when you see a lion goes and just, uh, he wants, he's hungry of blood, he wants to beat you, he wants to eat you, he wants wow. to, he wants to win, that's how he's on the court, you know, when he steps on the court, if you give him a little finger, he eats you, you're Thank gone, you, you know, he's just, uh, so it's, 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 it's unbelievable to see, you know, this, and I am happy that I'm part of these uh, records. Doesn't matter that I'm not long in the team, but still, it's it's nice to be a part. And it's not over yet. You know, we no. are talking like you know, it's it's going and going and going.
And Mario, when's the first time you came across Novak? I have a good story because it's it's kind of nice story because it was first time 2006 and his management group called me, actually my friend, Brano Stankovic, who they asked him, they're looking for coach and they asked him if he can coach Novak, it was 2006. And he said, no, no, I don't want to travel, but I have one good friend, I can ask him. So they, so then later on they called me and then basically after, and, I, and they asked me if I can coach Novak Djokovic. I said, who is this guy? Because that time I was coaching in National Tennis Center and uh, <laughs> the girls, the women's uh, team, and then uh, in Slovakia. And then uh, I said, who is this guy? I don't know. I, I don't think I'm coming to, to Paris. He wants me to come to Paris, to run girls, but I don't know who is this guy. Please call me in three days. So after three days, they call me back. And uh, at the meantime, I, I asked my family if, especially my daughter, she was 10. I asked her to, if, she, if she wants to travel to Paris, to Roland Garros. And that time she, she played tennis already for four years. And she said, yes, <laughs> Daddy, yes, let's go, let's go. So that, that, the decision was made, you know, decision was made. So we traveled to Paris where we meet all the family where we met all the family and the parents and then the brother and, and this and that. And he was playing on, uh, on the court. He was practicing with uh, Rojus, uh, Olivia Rojus. And uh, I took my daughter and we were observing him and uh, watching and I asked her, listen, Natalia, uh, what do you say for this guy? What do you say? And she looked at him and he was playing in meantime some rallies. And she said, I don't know. He doesn't, he doesn't have any backhand. <laughs> he doesn't have any backhand. <laughs> <laughs> was, so she she judged him already that time uh, that she gives me goal already that I have a tough job to work on and uh, you know I have to improve him on some ways and but I saw already that time he's a really as Goran mentioned he's an unbelievable competitor and uh, once he stands on the court he never never lose the point almost so even with the Weaknesses like he didn't have that time good that good foreign as now or service service or even back end was weak and he was more defending than offend he had a more defend defensive game than offensive. Uh, I knew that this guy I mean I didn't know he's gonna be number one but in one day he can be really good so uh, it's 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 kind of funny story but. Uh, and after that, we, we already spent a couple of weeks. And after that, we, we set up our, our uh, cooperation for a longer time. And uh, as Goran said, uh, that we really understand each other. If, I, if there would be no English between us, we, <laughs> we are completely like a, our mentality is very similar. That's why we understand each other and we don't have to speak that much. But it's very difficult uh, to understand and to, you know, ten this is also, uh, we call it inner tennis. Everybody talks with himself, you know, Novak is just very deep inside, focused and everything. And we have to be ones who thinks for him, you know, <laughs> sometimes. <Yeah. laughs> so we have to be really ready and really be sharp uh, to give him right advice at the right time. So this is maybe our credit, you know, to really give him right information at the right time because at that high level you have to at that high level you have to be really really fine uh, fine making this uh, making decision and uh, whatever improvement and you want to want to achieve you have to be really decisive so this is very tough but on the other hand it's a very very fine work uh, you look you've done a good job if you've been there you've been not, you've been ask you've been telling them the right answers because you're still around after over 15 years so but obviously you talk about improving a lot you've turned them into a serve bot after australia he was amazing his servant was just unbelievable so congratulations on the great work you put in with the serve like i thought uh, did that come from goran did you give him a few tips on the serve goran a uh, few a little bit but you know this is uh, you know we have so we are lucky that we have a good uh, guys with the statistics so we can uh, and now in this 
in this 21st century with all this you can go to youtube see some things see some videos what he was doing before and now so you can work on but uh, i'm happy the way he was serving in australia you know he was he broke all his record but his serve was a little bit underestimated for long long years because he was always serving good when he needed to serve well okay yeah. now he's more consistent and serving uh uh better and better and improved a lot in his second serve going for it but uh, i call this a teamwork you know we are the, we are team and we are here for each other we are backing each other and this is the beauty of this uh, job nice well congrats on a great job there my final question is not about novak though it's about the two you guys you guys played a match before atp tour match in gastad <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got kicked in both matches. You know, I met Goran when he was 17. Kid, he came uh, with Nikki Pilic first uh, for a qualification to Olympic Games in Seoul, 1988 in Linz. And I, I was asking my coach. Actually, I don't know if I had a coach because we didn't have so many. We didn't have coach that time. But my friend or my family, maybe my wife. I said, who is this guy? Who is this tall guy? It's, it's quite a good draw, no? I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it was final of qualification. The guy came on the court, and I knew it's, 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 it, then it's, it's gone. It's tough for me. I mean, it's, he aced me probably 16 aces in the first set. Uh, it was challenging. He won 7-6, but then he killed me in the second. Six love, fini, finito, basta cosi. And then... Obviously, I, 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 uh, in Kstad, he has to tell. Kstad, I think he, he won, I don't know, two sets, three sets, I don't remember, but he beat me again, obviously. I don't remember this one in Kstad, but I remember this one in Linz, you know. See, I was physically yeah. better prepared, you know, second set easy. So, you, 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 I, I, I was, uh, I kill you with, uh, with my uh, forehand and backhand, you know. <laughs> Not only with my serve, you know. You could not keep with me physically. Yeah, exactly. I know Mario, this is great, you know, since 88. So we know each other, respect each other. So we had some good matches and uh, we are still here. That's important and we still love. Nice. Well, yeah. Maybe we can get a rematch soon on the practice court. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we are that would be much difference for Goran, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, guys, I really appreciate you coming on here and chatting about Novak. Uh, I wish you all the best this year and the many years to come. Uh, keep breaking those records. And uh, yeah, thanks to the whole team and say hello to Novak for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao. 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 ciao.